Hi, I'm Lucas Ashley. I'm the lead pastor here at the Bridge Church, and just want to say thank you for taking some time to uh, join us in the message today. Um, but we want you to first of all know that we're just really praying that today's message is just simply a tool that the Holy Spirit uses to encourage you in your growth in your journey with Him. Um, but really what we're hoping is that it's a tool that is used in partnership with you being plugged into a local church community. Whether that's here with us in Bradenton or wherever it is that you might be watching from. We love anytime we can be an encouragement to somebody, but we know that that's what we're called to do is be a part of a local community and a local church. Um, but if it is a source of blessing in your life today, we just wanna encourage you to do three simple things. First and foremost, thank God for it. Any bit of encouragement or blessing that we can be is simply the Holy Spirit at work in your life today. So make sure you thank God for all that's going on in, or in and around your life. Um, but second is feel free to share it. You can share a link to the message or just share it through conversation as you're talking to people about how the Lord is working in and around your life. Um, but then also share with us. We love to hear stories of how the Holy Spirit is working in people's lives in and outside of our community. You can do that real simply by emailing us at amen at bridgechurchfl.com. Um, and then you can also just follow along, whether that's subscribing to our page or follow us on social media to see what all the Lord is doing through the ministries here at the Bridge Church. Um, and last but certainly not least, if you'd like to partner with us financially as we continue to partner with the Lord and bringing hope to those in our community and globally, you can do so by giving through our website. It's bridgechurchfl.com slash give. We're praying for you today and hope today's message is a source of blessing and encouragement for you. Well, it's good to be with you uh, this morning. My name is Mark, if we've not yet met, and uh, I'm the legacy uh, pastor here at the Bridge Church. Just want to say hi to, to uh, Ann, who's watching from New York. Want to say hi to Phyllis from Ohio. Want to, as well, Tim Muldoon, Bill Mitrovich, uh, Debbie Behealer. Good to see all you guys as well joining us online. And for all of you that are here, uh, just out of curiosity, how many of you, it's your first time here? Just curious. You can put your hand up if it's your first time. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. <clears throat> and so, you know, one of the things that I think uh, most people struggle with, question, we kind of grow up with this question in our minds of what is my purpose in life, right? Like what is, what is God's plan for my life? Like that, those are the big questions, and, and a lot of times we, we don't know exactly how to find out. And, and we've been talking about discovering your purpose. And Pastor Lucas did such a great job of laying the foundation for all that we're going to talk about. Great stuff. I've heard from many of you just going, man, this has been so eye-opening. And what we're going to do is uh, over the next two weeks, we're going to take all of that. We're going to filter it down. And we're going to give you the answer of how do you discover your purpose, how do you connect to that, how do you connect to uh, God's plan for your life. And so this week and next week, we're going to be talking about the critical step and a critical move that makes that happen. And it's something called spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, or maybe that's a new term for you, don't let it freak you out, okay? We're not talking about anything weird. What we're talking about is this. When we talk about spiritual gifts, when a person comes to a place in their life where they place their faith in Jesus Christ, where you go, I believe you died on the cross for my sin. I believe that, that you want to forgive me my sin, that you're inviting me into a relationship with you. And, and when you place your faith in him as the one who took your sin and you say, you're my savior, you're my Lord, literally, you're, you're placing your faith in the finished work of Christ. That is, he died on the cross for your sins, he was raised again from the dead, and now he wants to impart into you his life. Literally, he comes into your life by the power of the Holy Spirit. When he does that, he, he gives you a spiritual gift, at least one. And so what is a spiritual gift? A spiritual gift can be defined very simply in this way, that it's a unique ability that God gives you to build community and to point people to him. That's really what a spiritual gift is. God gives you a spiritual gift, and, and if you pull back the lens of, of uh, biblical history and our history as, as mankind, very early on, when we turned our backs on God, records about this in Genesis chapter 3, 
Several things were lost. Community relationship was lost, and a, and a communal connection with God was lost. Jesus came to reverse all that. And that's why when he gives you a spiritual gift, what he's doing is he's literally restoring what was lost. And that's why this is so important. Because this fits into God's great plan of what he wants to do in your life. For many of us, we struggle with a sense of how is it that I, can, I never feel like I have a clear sense of my purpose in life? Why is it that I feel like I, I, I don't know what God's plan is for my life? And I want you to kind of understand this from a perspective that is given to us uh, by Peter. So Peter was the one who, if you guys know the story, he actually betrayed Jesus. And not only did he betray Jesus, Jesus said, you're going to betray me. And then Jesus, when he was raised from the dead, reinstated Peter. And so, so let me just say this right up front. For some of you, when we talk about these things, some of you have already disqualified yourself. Some of you already thought, well, there's no way God could do anything through me that is meaningful or significant because look at my past. Because look at all that I've done. Because look at all my failures. Because look at all my compromises. Look at all my regrets. And I can tell you this, you don't outrank Peter. You don't outrank him. And if God could restore Peter and bring him to a place where he became one of the greatest influences in the church, then God could do something powerful through you. Can you, can you agree with that? Can we all agree with that for a moment? So let me just read from 1 Peter chapter 10, uh, 4. And we're going to read verses 10 and 11. Two things, two chapters. We're going to look at this as encapsulated and as a complete thought. I want you to follow along with me. Peter wrote this. Each of you, I'm sorry, did you guys see that? Each of you, each of you who? who placed your faith in Christ. Each of you who claim to be a follower of Jesus, each of you who've placed your faith in him, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of what? Of God's grace in its various forms. And it's interesting because the word gift there and the word grace actually come from the same roots. Another way of looking at it is, each of you should use whatever grace you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. But it's a gift. If anyone speaks, they should do as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides. Why? Say it with me. So that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So, so I want you to take a look at this for a moment. Can you guys see what this is that I'm holding? It's a faucet. That's exactly right. It's a faucet. Now, you guys have used faucets all of your life. And, and here's what we know about a faucet. A faucet is simply a conduit, right? It provides a pathway. What a faucet does is a faucet can, can allow something to flow through when you open it up, or a faucet can be closed so that nothing flows through it. And a faucet is meant to be able to dispense through the faucet whatever it is connected to. That's what the purpose of a faucet is for. And, and think of yourself like this faucet. Say everyone has different gifts, everyone has different abilities, so maybe your faucet, you're shaped a little bit differently than any other faucet. Maybe there's something about you that is unique. And, and, and this is why, by the way, this is why, watch it there, Chuck. So this is, this, is, this, is why, this is why it's important to understand it's a unique gift. Why? Because it's unique to you. Right? Because, because we all come from different backgrounds. So you've got different experiences that have shaped you. Am I correct? You've got a different passion, different heart that shapes you. Isn't that true? You've got things that really, for some of you, mean so much to you and are so important to you that isn't necessarily important to the person sitting next to you. Isn't that true? So each one of you, each one of us, is a different shape and in some way is a different faucet than any other. 
But there, there's something about this particular faucet that, that we can all agree on and observe. And that's that this faucet right now simply represents potential. That's all. Because it doesn't matter whether I open the valve or whether I close the valve, nothing comes out of it. And the reason that it is, is this literally represents, from God's perspective, what we would call untapped potential. Literally untapped. And for some of you, this is actually where you're at. You don't know your purpose. You don't understand how to get there. You don't know God's plan for your life. You don't understand how this works. And, and today, I want you to know that, that God actually has something for you today. To be able to take a step that will change everything for you, that will begin to help God unfold something in your life that you've never experienced before. And so either your untapped potential, because maybe at one time you were active and you were serving and you were engaged, and, and, but maybe you kind of went, eh, I'm in a season of life where that's just, it just doesn't matter to me as much anymore. I can tell you, you are untapped potential still. For some of you, it may be that you've actually never come to trust Christ. Maybe you've been burned by church. Maybe you've been, maybe, maybe you've been burned by Christians. Maybe you have this spiritual hunger where you want to know who God is, but you find yourself so turned off by what you see as Christian culture. And so it's been confusing to you. And, and so you still represent untapped potential. You, you, you haven't discovered your purpose yet. For some of you, it's, it, it's, it's something that maybe you've placed your faith in Christ, but you've never understood spiritual gifts. Maybe you've never taken a step of faith in the area of engaging your gifts because you want to know all the information first. Like, you want to take all the mystery out of everything, and I'll start to do something when I get all the answers and I'm absolutely comfortable. You're waiting too long. Because anytime God wants to do something through you, it's going to require faith. It's gonna be scary. And you gotta do it scared because that's how you begin to grow spiritually. And so you are either untapped potential or there's something that you're experiencing. Now, when, when I first uh, came across 1 Peter 4 years ago, immediately an image came to my mind and I've always talked from this image but this time I was like, I think I'm just gonna make it. And so, this is exactly when you see 1 Peter chapter 4. <laughs> this is what I want you to think. This is what I, I, I want you to remember this. I never want you to forget this. So when you come to Christ, you get tapped in now to the grace of God. The grace of God is, is God's favor upon your life now because you have chosen to trust him with your life and your eternity. There is a grace that God gives, and it's not just favor, it's also power. It's spiritual power. So grace is, is favor and it's divine empowerment. It's both. To live the new life that you're created for. By the way, that's what's so exciting about baptism, right? Because baptism is a public declaration that I have been washed, all my sins have been washed away. I've been raised to live a new life with the power of God and with his favor upon my life. And so it's so important. And so what happens is God brings us together because God is building community and God wants to point people to himself and he does it through you. And either you are untapped potential or you are tapped in to the grace of God. And what happens is when you place your faith in Christ, the fullness of God comes into your life. The fullness of Christ, the Holy Spirit comes into your life. And, he, and for everyone who has opened up their life to that, he brings us together in community. But I can't do community by myself. And you can't do community by yourself. We need each other, and there's something that you bring that is unique to you that is different than the way it's going to come through me. The grace of God is to flow through you. The desire of God is to flow through you. And your experiences in life have shaped you. 
And so when God's grace lives in you and you have experienced God bringing you healing from past trauma, now there is a grace that can flow through you where you can lead people to healing in a way that other people can't. When, when generosity flows through you, the, the grace of God that has come into your life, when it flows through you in a way that's unique to you, God takes those things and he changes your life and he changes the life of those who have received it. It's like God blesses you because you're to channel whatever he blesses you with in the direction where he wants it to go. God pours his grace into your life. And by the way, when he sees what you do with what you have, what does he do? He just keeps pouring. He just keeps pouring. He just keeps pouring. When you take the knowledge that you've learned in your spiritual journey and you share that with others so that they can grow as well, he's pouring a grace through you. It's his grace coming, and it's coming through you in a unique way that you see and experience the grace of God. And when a community of people come together, each one of us wide open, wide open to God, totally focused on him and all that he would want to accomplish, his grace will pour out through you, through your spiritual gift. And that's how this works. And so sometimes we are untapped potential. But when you begin to open up your life to everything that God wants to do through you, you will begin to experience things that you've never experienced before. You'll actually experience God in a way that you've never experienced God before. It just goes big. And so, so here's some things. We're going we're gonna to be talking about spiritual gifts, but there's some things that I want you to keep in mind. And these are more reminders of the things that we've heard over the past few weeks. This is so important. So when we talk about your spiritual gift, and, and I want you to think in terms of my spiritual gift, because when you became a believer, you received a spiritual gift, because that's what the Spirit does. And so here's three things that I want you to remember, quick, quick points. Number one is this, is that my gift connects me to God's purpose. My, matter of fact, say that with me. My gift connects me to God's purpose. Your spiritual gift is actually your connection to the purpose of God. So go back to that, that passage in 1 Peter 4, if you would. Look at how he starts out. He starts out, each of you should use whatever gift you have what? Receive, it's grace, not earned. God didn't look at you and go, man, you are so, so awesome at this. He just goes, no, I'm going to do something that can only be explained by me being in your life, right? So he's going to, he's going to bring his grace in your life. So he says, each of you should use whatever gift you've received. Look at how he ends in verse 11. He says, so that in all things, God may be what? Praise. Now, this is important. Pastor Luke has talked about our unifying purpose is to glorify God. For the church, that means that what we're doing is, is we're building community and we're pointing people to Christ. That's what we're doing. Pointing people to Christ is our unifying purpose. And so what happens is, is when you serve God, when you serve others, when you're taking the grace of God that he has poured out into you and you let it flow you let it come through you, you are now living your purpose. Your gift connects you with God's purpose. And by the way, knowing your gift keeps you in this category. Studying gifts doesn't necessarily connect you. What connects you is, number one, you're connected to Christ, and number two, you are using your gift that you've opened up the valve in your life as you've tapped into the life that God wants to give you. So that's how you actually discover the life that you were created for was through this. Here's the second thing that I want you to be able to hang on to is, is and say this out loud with me, my gift connects me to God's plan. My gifts connect me to God's plan. This is so important. Have you ever heard the phrase, God has a plan for your life? 
It's true. He does have a plan for your life. The first part of that plan is to connect you to himself. That's the first part of it. The next part of that plan is to use your gift so he can connect you to something else. So let's take a look. Ephesians 2, verse 10. It says this. Say this with me. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we could do the good things that he planned. That's right. He planned it for you long ago. Think about that. God actually has a plan for your life. And it's a plan that only you can uniquely fulfill in a way that nobody else can. God has a plan for your life. God has literally set up in advance, far in advance, even before you were on this planet, he had already set up circumstances where you're going to run into people that, that need to know about him. He's already set up in advance communities that he wanted to build. And the part that you play, what you bring to the table, God has already planned long before you were born. He had a plan for you of the good things that he wanted to do through you. And the only way to engage in God's plan is through using your spiritual gift. Otherwise, you're still just untapped potential. And so for those of you that have been wondering, what's God's plan for my life? It's come to Jesus as your Savior and Lord and then begin to serve the true and living God. Begin to allow the grace of God to flow through you into the lives of other people. Begin to let God bring through you what is uniquely going to happen through you that won't happen through anybody else. That's really it in a nutshell. But here's the third thing that I want you to understand is this. Is that, and say this with me, my gifts connect me to God's people. My gifts, your gifts, literally is what connects you to a sense of community. It's hard to feel a sense of community if you're going from this spiritual experience to that spiritual experience, and I'm going to look for it over there, and I'm going to look it over here, and I'm going to go over there, and I'm going to be a consumer, and I'm going to go, oh, that's my favorite preacher, or that's my favorite, or that's my favorite group, or I just want to run. And what happens is when you don't actually get planted somewhere and begin to use your spiritual gifts, you will not feel connected. You will simply be a consumer. But what connects you to people is when you realize, man, we're all working for the same purposes. Man, I'm, I know that what I'm doing is a part of something that is so much bigger than myself. I'm living for more than just me. I'm actually living so God can work through me and move in the lives of other people around me. And so God just wants to pour his grace through you. But until you decide to step into that, and it is scary, for some of you, maybe you, hey, man, I did that once before. I got totally burned out. Then don't do it the same way. Amen. And here's the deal about spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts, there's, you grow in your maturity. When you discover spiritual gifts, in the beginning, all of our brokenness is coming in, and God goes, I still want to pour out my grace through you, and as you begin to walk with God more and more, as you begin to deal with, can I just say it, your junk? When you begin to walk in forgiveness, the grace just comes out even more. When you begin to walk in generosity, the grace just comes out even more. When you begin to walk with words of encouragement, the grace of God just pours out of you even more. When you make up your mind intentionally that I'm going to live in the purpose of God for my life, I'm going to walk in the plan of God for my life, for my life God's grace pours out through you, and also you realize I'm not alone. Man, I, 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 see, I see Tom, and I see what he's doing. Man, I see this person over here. I see what they're doing. I oh, mean, we're all in this together. We're living our lives on mission, and God just keeps pouring out his grace. 
And his spirit keeps moving. Do you know how powerful it is? You guys, when we gather together, you know, we're not going to church. I hope you understand that. When you come here, you're not going to church. If you're a follower of Christ, you are the church. You're like bringing, you're bringing together the sanctuary of God that lives inside of you. And God takes that sanctuary and goes, I'm just going to pour my spirit out. By the way, that's why some of you, when you first come here, you can't stop weeping and you don't know why. And it's because what you're experiencing is the Spirit of God touching you, washing over your parched soul and letting you know that he sees you. And so there's something powerful. So Paul, in, in his letter to the Corinthians, which were people that were not Jewish and they came to Christ um, later on, he says this in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. He said, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can, what? Help each other. So we're going to do a crash course on spiritual gifts. Some of you go, you got like three minutes left, man. We're doing this in two parts. Chill out. We'll get as far as we can. Next week, here's what we're going to do. We're going to continue on the spiritual gifts. And next week, we're going to talk about how can you know what your spiritual gifts are. Okay, so uh, here's what the Apostle Paul says, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11. I want you to get this. I want this to soak in you, all right? So let's read this out loud together. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes these gifts. All these gifts. Sorry, you guys said it right. I said it wrong. (laughs) See, I need you. It's just, (laughs) I can't do this without community. He alone decides which gift each person should have. Very important. Notice that no matter what our gifts are, they come from God. God will choose which gifts you have. And he'll do it on the basis of what he knows you can handle. He will do it on the basis of how you're shaped, what your experiences are. He'll he'll use your natural abilities and connect you through that. He'll use the way that that your heart is wired. Some of you are cause-driven people. Any cause-driven people in here, right? Some of you are like moment-by-moment people. When you see something, you like to step in. God knows you. Matter of fact, nobody knows you better than Jesus. And so you can't go, well, man, that gift. I wish I had that gift. Like, I wish I could sing like the worship team. God has decided that is a bad idea. I could do it, but we'd have to lock these doors if we're going to do it. There are some things I'm no good at. And like, as we walk through the gifts, you'll see different ones. But the, but the thing you've got to realize is this. Notice that all of these faucets are on the same level. Amen. Nobody outranks anybody else. I don't care what the position is. I don't care what the gift is, right? Every single person that knows Jesus Christ matters. Every single one. Nobody is any greater than any other. God has brought us together, and he's decided what gifts you bring to the table to help make us that strong community and be a part of what it is that God wants to do. And so whenever we talk about these gifts, there is a spirit-led expression of it, but because we're maturing, a lot of times when we start out, we're not even emotionally mature to understand what God is doing through us, right? And you'll see that, and as we look at different gifts, you'll realize, oh, that was an unhealthy expression, and this is a healthy expression of it. So we're gonna jump in, and then we're gonna jump out, but I want you to do this. I just want you to keep your heart open, all right? So let's talk about spiritual gifts. One, the number one gift I want to talk about is mercy. Mercy. What is mercy? Mercy is, if you have the gift of mercy, and after I read it, if this is you, I want you to just raise your hand, okay? God's love in you causes you to empathize with people's struggles, and you are moved to bring comfort. How many of you have a gift of mercy? Okay, all right? So mercy, mercy has in a less mature expression and then a mature expression. There's one that comes from our own brokenness, right? And that can be called codependency. 
Codependency is, I don't feel good about me if I'm not fixing somebody. So I, and here's how you know if you're codependent. If you look at all the people around you, you feel like they suck you dry. Like I'm just, these people are wearing me out. <laughs> I'm going broke fixing everybody's problems, man. When do I get time for myself? Okay, codependency. Codependency is you surround yourself with needy people because it makes you feel good to help needy people because you're not as needy as they are, you don't think. Mercy has that expression, but when it becomes led by the Spirit, mercy grows in this sense. Mercy goes, you know what? Uh, helping people has a timing to it. There's a way that I can express mercy, but I'm not sure this is the moment for that to happen because I want to make sure I'm letting God have room to do whatever he wants to do through their struggle. But we need merciful people. By the way, you mercy people, here's what I can tell. Uh, it's not necessarily, you may not even be an emotional person, but man, you will kick down the doors of a crack house and pull somebody out. And you don't care what anybody thinks. So many ministries are started by mercy-hearted people who aren't necessarily warm, fuzzy people. But the gift of mercy lives in you. And there's so many things that are attached to that. We'll look at that next week. But here's what I want you to do today. For some of you, this is where you are. And God sees you, and he sees the potential that you have. He already has in mind all the beauty that he wants to pour out through you, all the grace that he wants to pour out through you. And there's something that is unique about you that when God's grace pours out through you, it's going to change people's lives. And they're going to experience hope. And they're going to experience breakthrough because of all that you've been through. But you can't lead people where you're not ready to go or willing to go yourself. For some of you, the reason that you're still untapped potential is you've never trusted him. Part of you just wants to sit back. Oh, I've already done that stuff. Oh, I got burned doing that. Yet everything that God brings through you has the power to change a thousand captive souls if you will let him. And so for some of you today, it's, will you trust Christ? Not just with your soul for eternity. That is big. Would you trust him with your life here? Would you trust him? Would you let him Pour out in you a grace that he's dying to pour out in you and he's dying to pour it out through you. Would you trust him? Would you trust him that he'll take everything and make it count for good? Would you trust him that he'll do that? Would you trust him not just as your savior for eternity, but trust him with your life now in every season, I guarantee you. You have something that the world needs. Maybe you go, wow, I'm just chilling out. I'm just not doing that right now. Sometimes I wonder, what is it that we're missing out on that God wants to bring through you that would just change so many people's lives. You were created for this. This is your purpose. He's got a plan for you. And, and you walk in that plan intentionally. You choose to engage. And, and, and as long as you don't, as long as you stay like this, you will always wonder, well, what's God's purpose for my life? And it is all around you. You'll always wonder, how do I discover God's plan for my life? And he's offering it. But you have to act upon it by faith. Trust him. And for some of you that are here today, today is a day that you make up your mind. Today is a day that you go, I'm going to trust him with my life, not just with my soul for eternity, but with my life here. Today is a day that you go, I believe that the world would be a better place 
if God's grace were poured out through me in all of the beautiful ways that he created me for, in all the beautiful ways that he'll take everything about who I am and who he is, and it'll come out uniquely that way. That today is the day that you choose that. Today is the day that for some of you, you choose to trust Jesus Christ for the very first time. There's only one name. I can tell you there's only one way. It's not Buddha. It's not all our crystals. It's not the horoscope. It's not any of that. It's Jesus. And if you place your faith in him, and you place your faith and trust in him alone, God will pour out his grace into your life. He will give you what you've been thirsting for all along. He will fill you with his spirit, and he's then going to pour out through you in ways that you can't even begin to imagine. So I'm going to ask you guys right now, close your eyes. And if you've never placed your trust in Christ with your life, as Savior and Lord, then this is the day that you begin a new journey where you step over the line of faith and you tell God, I'm trusting you with my life. I trust you as my Savior. I turn away from all the sin that has controlled me and all the things that break my relationships down, and I ask you to come into my life and fill me. And right where you are, you could just tell him, Lord, that's me. That's me, God. That's me. He hears it. He hears it. And for those of you that are not tapped in, not in a meaningful way, today, would you be willing to not write out the script and have so much control over your life that you're missing out on God's purpose for you? That you're missing out on God's plan for you? Would you... Would you Stop filling in the blank with so many things that you think disqualify you. And would you trust God that he knows what he's doing when he placed his hand upon your life and called you to himself? Would you just trust him? Would you trust him that if he could take someone like Peter who betrayed Jesus, who denied Jesus, and that God raised him up to be one of the greatest leaders, would you trust that God could do that through you? Would you trust that your disqualifications don't exceed God's power and his desires for you? Then where you are, you could tell him, Lord, that's me. And Lord, I trust you today. I trust you. I trust you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. For those of you that are watching online, same for you. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your grace. Lord, for those that today are trusting you with their lives for all eternity and for life here, God, pour out your spirit on them, God. Pour it out on them in a way that they know it's you, God. For the person who's felt disqualified today, pour out your spirit on them in a way that they know it's you. God, create in each one of us a hunger and a desire to never settle for anything less than living out the purpose for which we are created, to live out the plan that you already had in place for us to walk in. We thank you, Lord, for that. And we praise you. Thank you, Lord. And so, guys, we're going to take a moment here. And if there's something that you feel like God's doing in you, and maybe you feel like, I just need, I need to do something, uh, whatever that is, you can, you can stand where you are. We're going to create space up here, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to worship. But don't just sing. Please declare instead. Declare what you want. Let God hear the cry of your heart. Sometimes you just got to tell your own soul, I'm tired of settling for less. I'm tired of settling for church, for religion. I'm tired of it. God, I want you in my life. And so when we worship, worship, declare, call on God, and let him do in you everything that he wants to do, and you respond to him however God leads you. So I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet if you would. Open up your heart. Open up your heart. Open up your heart.
Let God move. Thank you, Lord. Move in our midst. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name.